As a poultry farmer, one of the things that I do exceptionally well is chicks brooding. And technically to assess your performance in chicks brooding, you look at the mortality rate and the growth rate of the chicks. And on these two fronts, I've actually had exceptional results. But you know, today I'm not just going to show you how to brood chicks and be successful in chicks brooding. Today I'm going to show you something you have never seen before. How you can actually brood chicks without giving them any heat, no heat at all. And if you are aware of the weather condition in Nigeria right now, especially in the southwestern region, you will know that everywhere is cold during the nights. But how then do you want to do that? How then do you want to brood your chicks without providing them with heat? All right, don't worry. This is not just theory. I have some chicks. I'm going to show you everything right now. So just come with me. So if you're just watching this channel for the first time, this is DIY Hagrick, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. This is the number one guy that wants you to succeed in poultry and is putting out videos to help you, to guide you and make sure that you eat that success that you want. All right, and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back as we go through today's video. So I've actually come a long way in chicks brooding, you know, I've brooded chicks in their tens, in their hundreds, and even in their thousands. I've brooded up to 10,000, 11,000 birds at the same time, layers, broilers, and all of them, you know. But you know, the challenge is the same. The challenge is the same for all these birds. But what matters is that in today's video, I'm going to be showing you something remarkable, how you can brood your chicks with no eat at all so, and in case you are already feeling like okay maybe this is just for those who are raising just one two three or ten hundred birds no it's actually for anybody it's for anybody you will be able to save on that eat source after watching this video all right so let's go in right here are the remaining noilers and uh, the few turkeys they are actually the ones that made me come up with this idea it's something that i've known for a while but you know uh, no matter how much I want to tell you guys, showing you how I do the whole thing is the best that I could do for you. You see, beyond me trying to put out this content, beyond me trying to explain to you, I figure that it's better I show you the exact same thing that will give you the kind of result that I'm getting. For me, with chicks brooding, it's more like I've been able to get in sync with these chicks is beyond what I can actually explain. It's more like I've gotten in sync with them and I kind of know when they are hokey and when they are not. And that's the basic thing. That's the number one thing that you want to be able to address for you to be able to know when your chicks are fine and when they are not fine. If you are able to know when they are fine, when they are not fine, then you'll be able to tweak things in your favor. All right, so let's come into the place where I'm raising this new chicks, where I'm using this new idea. All right, so right now I'm at the entrance of where I'm going to show you this amazing idea that you want to see. As you may know, we also supply the old chicks. So this whole thing came up when after supplying of the day old chicks, we still had some chicks left and uh, we couldn't just throw them away. And my partner said to me, he was like, oh, DIY, I think you should just take this uh, once home and just try to raise them and see what you can do with them. So I was like, oh, is this not going to be burdened to me? I don't really have space to raise them uh, in this other experimental pen. I have noilers and I have turkeys there that I'm not even sure they will be out in the next couple of weeks. So I figured, uh, what would I do, what would I do? Then I said, okay, maybe it's just time I come up with this idea or I develop this idea and I show it to you guys. So this actually came up from me trying to solve a pressing problem. And it might be the reason why you also need to come up with this kind of idea. You may be having this kind of challenge, maybe the place you use normally, because I have the facilities to actually brood. I have the brooders, I have the electric, I have the the infrared, the damly gas brooder that even has the thermostat. I'll be telling you guys once the new stock comes, I've, we are done selling the first stock. So I have all these things and there's gas. But the new problem arose, there was no space to raise the new one. So I needed to come up with something and I said, okay, let's use this opportunity to teach you guys how you can brood without using it at all. Okay, so let's cut the chase. It's time to go in. All right, let me start by showing you how awesome th this thing is. Wow, wow. So I can actually roll it out of the way to pack out uh, their feces underneath the cage. And I can also roll it back in position when I'm done. 
yeah and we're good yeah i know you are enjoying the video but you know what hit the like button if you like it and make sure you subscribe if you are here to subscribe to this channel all right so this whole concept is actually about spatial management if you are able to manage the space that you have to provide the level of comfort that your birds need you can actually do without it i don't even want to start telling you all the story behind these chicks because they went through hell before this thing was completed they had to stay inside my car for two days you know i'll just wind down the glass and in the very hot afternoon i'll open the the boot at the back so they stayed inside there for two days that was after the first day of arch they spent three days they only had they only tested water once before they had access to this awesome uh space that they have now all right so and i recorded a part of this video earlier when it was really sunny uh, i decided to wait for the evening this is almost seven o'clock before i do this part and uh, here is the thermometer this is that smart thermometer that i sell to people who are interested as you can see it reads 34.1 degrees c inside here no heat around almost seven o'clock okay and uh, yeah you will say maybe later in the night the temperature will drop drastically and i agree with you it's still going to drop further the temperature will drop further and when the weather is really hot what i do is that i'm going to show you the space uh, what i do is that i open the door apart from this small smaller window i open the door so that there can be aeration and as you can see let me help you to see yeah as you can see this thing is covered with sack it's covered all around with sack so it reduces the air flow that is coming directly and eating them in the form of draft but they will be still be able to have air exchange from the top here and you know one thing that this thing is able to achieve is that it reduces the space for the birds while still giving them comfort comfort in the sense that they are not in contact with their poop the poop easily drops so there's no ammonia at all there's nothing to give them that uh, challenge with breeding and they are comfortable whenever it is cold yeah maybe they i'm going to explain why they might be cold in few instances whenever it's cold maybe it's raining in the night and they are out of light they can't eat no light here maybe the nepa are taking the light and there's no supplemental lighting that's what can allow them to feel some level of cool but whenever that happens they are able to crowd themselves together in a kind of ld manner because their number two is not too much and this whole space is little they are not running to one angle because of uh, rodents or anything i've ensured that rodents are not here again they were rodents here i had to kill them and block all the crevices so those are the things that you want to guide against if they feel threatened inside here there might be trouble all right so what they have now is comfort uh, let me show you how the inside looks like all right so what you have inside here is about 80 birds 80 birds although these are cockerels these are not broilers these are about 80 birds and they are all looking okay so they have just one um, bucket of water one drinker and um, they have two feeders yeah because they will not always drink at the same time they may eat at the same time maybe we are just bringing in the food they may eat at the same time but they will not always eat or uh, drink at the same time also the water should have been two but because of this space actually you there's no point bringing two because you are going to reduce the space to a level that it will start bringing discomfort to the birds but i tell you because of the arrangement you see there's gap for them to walk on both sides of uh, the feeder and the same here that's why i slanted the feeder so they have easy access to the water these are the things that you should consider and with this they are about one week old now if i am correct yeah they are about one week old now and they are looking perfectly okay perfectly okay yeah i know you're about to say come on this would only work for a few birds a few number of birds actually that is not correct that's not the truth uh we have adopted this place this kind of store for this one but you can actually do something similar 
for even large number of birds and how can you do that that's what i want to show you now okay so because this is about spatial management you are reducing the space that they have even if i were to put any light source here i can't bring a gas brother i would only put maybe a lantern and the lantern will be sufficient for this space why because the space is limited the space is limited if i if i was putting a lantern here i would just have to cover it at the top i'll cover it and just open one side for airflow for flow of oxygen so in that way the lantern is releasing heat and instead of the heat just escaping to the upper part of the house is going to be contained in this small cupboard or cubicle uh, shape the same thing can be applied or can be adapted in a bigger building for example let's say okay let me roll this out of the way for example let's say you have this whole space to eat up with your gas brooder or whatever it source you are using i tell you you can reduce this by 75 percent by adopting this so you are going to have to do something this is the roof you are going to create your own artificial or secondary roof you are going to nail some kind of ceiling you're going to nail a ceiling and um, you place your cover you can use sack i prefer the use of sack to nylon okay because sack will still allow a little bit of air exchange oxygen can still flow in a little all right so you can create your secondary roof in that your brooding area alone so that your eating your heat source does not have to eat up the whole space but just that small area after all your birds are not cows they are really short small uh are small birds that are just on the floor so even if you are not creating a platform like this you can still have them stay on the floor but reduce the height of the house a lot so that you don't have to eat up the whole space if you can do that you are going to reduce the heat that you have to provide to them drastically yeah you don't mind even if you have to crawl and enter you're just going to take you along maybe five days seven days maximum 10 days to brood your broilers so you can crawl in and crawl out and with the use of this um thermo hygrometer you don't have to enter inside your chicken uh, brooding space all the time you can just monitor the temperature from outside on your smartphone one thing that you must do if you have something like this is ensure that they don't run out of feed and preferably let them have access to light all the time when they are eating and they are active they will not feel cold they will not be cold because their body is metabolizing and there's heat being generated in that order all right so that's the innovation you have to see you can also see that i've used sack instead of linon i actually prefer using sack instead of linon linon completely blocks out air exchange but this one permits a little bit of hair but at a very reduced rate and that is ld for you i don't also encourage the use of charcoal in any kind of brooding setting charcoal produces carbon monoxide which is toxic for your birds it's toxic for humans we're not just looking for profit in poultry we're also looking for wellness so ensure that you're also taking care of yourself as you are taking care of the birds so i discourage the use of charcoal for it you can use it in your bedding to suck up more moisture and ammonia in, a, in the bedding in the wood shavings or whatever later material you're using I use charcoal for that, but not for it or not as it sucks. So at night, when the weather gets really cold and it's about 26 degrees, I tell you these birds will still be super fine. All I need to do is just provide them with lighting and let them have enough feed to eat. Another thing I do is I never serve them with cold water or even cool water as you may call it. I don't serve them with water because of the weather. Whenever the weather is cold, I don't serve them that uh, room temperature kind of water. I make sure that I make it warm. I serve them with warm water. So they are inside, their internal organ is not chilling, you know? Just like babies don't take the kind of water that we take, they take warm water. So I prefer to give them that warm water. But when it is in the afternoon that I'm changing their water, the water is already warm. Yeah, 
the, the kind of temperature the water is at is not the kind it is in the morning or late in the night. So that's another thing you want to consider. Ensure that you serve them not the kind of water that is hot, just lukewarm water. Yeah, lukewarm water, that's the word. Lukewarm water. All right, so a lot of people have reached out to me concerning the Damley Gas Brother, which is very, very good. And some of these people are only raising 50, 100 birds. I won't really, I, I won't really encourage them to get the Damley Gas Brother, which is about 100 and something thousand Naira. That's a lot of money for somebody who is going to be raising, raising 50 to 100 birds in their backyard, except you are planning on expanding very soon. Okay, so for those kind of people, this kind of thing is very good for you. Even if you want to provide them with any kind of heat source, a lantern will do inside here. And that's a very good one for you. The added ad advantage is that they have no contact with their poop and everything just drops down there. Okay, so I might be leaving the, <clears throat> I might be leaving the plan in the description uh, so you can check it out and see how you can make this kind if you want it for yourself. You can see it also has tires, helps it to move back and forth easily and everything is just so easy and that's how life should be, easy.